Hello ladies and gentlemen, Vaughn here with Dysfunctional Films. I am back with another tutorial. If you haven't noticed yet, I had my copy, so this is going to be a very exciting tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you radial accents with an After Effects. Now, this is something you would use in your motion graphic just to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun, you know, have those little on your screen. That's exactly what this is for. I'm going to show you different ways of bringing on radial effects, uh, not using your standard, tra well, I guess, using your summer... Manipulating some of After Effects' effects to create some more interesting effects. So without further ado, let's get started. So I have this uh, whole composition set up and I have, uh, you know, my intro text and then I have three different compositions and these are the three we're going to go through. Uh, and they're all using the, basically the same effect, just in different ways. Now the first one, we have this almost like a blob-like thing coming on. Uh, that's pretty cool. The second one, we have these uh, lines popping out. So Still kind of cool, and over here we have this just wipe on standard clock wipe on effect. Now these can be done without doing an effect I'm about to use, but uh, I think the, this is probably the best and easiest way to get that done. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So uh, I'm going to delete these three compositions completely, and we're going to start from scratch. Uh, let's hide these and lock them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create. Actually, no, let's turn them off completely. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a rectangle. And yes, you might be like, Fawn, I thought we were doing radial. Shouldn't we be using circles? And you'll see what I'm going to do in about a minute. Uh, I'm going to drag a nice big rectangle. I don't like that color, so I'm going to change it to something, I don't know, something like that. That looks, looks sexy. Look at it. And uh, we're going to center this thing into the middle of our composition. Actually, now first, let's center our anchor point. I'm using the motion script from Mount MoGraph. If you don't know what that is, then I don't know why you're here. Check out his tutorials. Uh, it's Matt from Mount MoGraph, I believe. Um, and he does After Effects tutorials and motion graphics, and it's really good. Uh, this is his script that he created, and it's beautifully, perfectly excellent, wonderful. Uh, I suggest you check it out. It's, what, $25 for it, but it's $25 worth uh, worth paying for, I believe. Especially if you're doing this professionally. It saves you a lot of time and a lot of effort. So check that out, Matt from MammoGraph. Moving on. So uh, what we want to do is we want to create that blob-like effect that was the first one. And what it is, basically, I had this rectangle coming on. And let's say within these 10 frames here, I'm going to set a keyframe for my rotation. I set my anchor point to the bottom corner over here. So I have a rectangle at the top of my composition, anchor point on the bottom corner. I'm going to set a keyframe for my rotation. At the end of my rotation, I'm going to jump back 10 frames, and I'm going to rotate this bed boy until it's completely off the frame. And uh, yeah, so now I'm just going to do a little bit of an ease kind of thing to it. So now we have this. That looks nice. I actually kind of like that. I might use that for something else. But that's not what we're going to use it for. What we're going to do is now we're going to pre-compose this, control shift Okay, control shift C. There we go. And we're gonna call this blobby lib blob. Okay, cool. Move. Uh that's actually pretty good spelling for fast typing. Um next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a polar coordinates effect. And we're gonna drag that onto that new composition. So now what the polar coordinates effect does, it basically takes linear linear effects and makes them radial. And vice versa. So right now it's set to polar to rectangle. Polar is radial, rectangular, I guess it's rectangle. Uh, what we want to do is we go from rectangle to polar. Actually, no way, we want to go from polar to rectangle. No, rectangle to polar, yes. We're taking a rectangle effect and we're going to polar. And we're going to turn this interpolation up, and then we should have a circle. Now, if we go back to the beginning of our animation and we play this baby back, we should have that beautiful blob. And that's the basis of this effect, the polar coordinates effect, it's taking linear animations and turning them radial. So let's do another one, let's turn that baby off. And that one finished right about, where did that one end? And it right about here, so let's start in the next one here. Uh, and we'll create a new rectangle. Actually, there's still a whole bunch of different ones. Let's do, let's do that one, let's change our fill color to, let's go with a purple. Let's go with a blue color scheme. And, uh, Let's just do a whole bunch of different ones. Now, the when I did this effect before, uh, they all moved on at the same time, but we're gonna do a little bit something a little bit different. 
There we go. And uh, I don't want to see any of that. It's actually shy these bad boys. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? There we go. Don't want to see it. And yeah, we're just gonna draw a whole bunch of what is that? What is that? Yeah, there we go. A whole bunch of rectangles. And they don't have to be any like specific size or anything. No one cares. Especially for the sake of this tutorial. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna do a whole bunch of them. Just a couple for an example. That's fine. Okay, now that we have all these rectangles, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the anchor point to all of these at the bottom or the top, I guess, the top of their their center, whatever. And we're going to keyframe our scale. We're gonna unlink all these properties here. And uh, yeah, so this is the beginning. So we're gonna go forward about 10 frames keyframe the scale go back and we're just gonna scale these bad boys whatever negative seven remember negative seven has to be negative seven no i'm joking and we're just gonna offset them a bit randomly no one really cares except for me I'm very particular about my randomness and now when we play it back we should have these wow that wasn't random enough for How's that? Still not good enough. Okay, getting there. I just want a little bit more. Uh... Okay, that looks good. Now we're gonna select all these keyframes and then we're just gonna do something with them. See how it looks. Oh, that looks nice. That looks pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna hit U to hide our little keyframes and we're gonna call Control Shift C to pre-compose. And this is where the magic happens. You can call this line thingy whatever not important gay gay anyway moving on polar coordinates uh drag and drop and we're gonna go from rectangle to polar and i'm gonna crank that baby up and there we go we have that effect radial effect thingy and as you can see let's play it back we have Yeah, so we have that effect and whatnot. So now we can, the thing, the beauty I love about this effect here is that we can actually dial in. Let's say I don't like how long this one is. I can always jump back into my line thingy. And uh, which one is that one? This one, I believe. Uh, and let's just go into the scale of this particular one and I can just set the height much lower, go back to my composition. And that baby won't be that long anymore. See, beautiful. Um, and I can really just dial in whatever I want. I could do a whole like a bunch of steps that get bigger or a bunch of effect. And then, you know, you can always uh, stack these effects. So let's say I wanted to do a wipe on, which is the next one. Um, actually, you know what? Let me, I'll do that after. So I'm not hiding a lot of Yes. So let's, that one finishes right up there. So uh, I'll hide that one there and I'll create a no shape layer. Action and on hide. There you go. Bye bye. We'll create a new one. Let's make this one green. <laughs> ah, coffee. I love coffee. Okay. Um, and we're just gonna do a, a, a another one at the top, just like that. Oopsie. That's on. What? What just happened? Okay. I'm going to go to my motion script. And I'm going to. I'm going to. What am I gonna do? I'm going to put it right here. First, I'm going to put it in center. I'm going to center my uh, rectangle in, the, in my composition just like that. And then I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to jump forward about 10 frames. Keyframe my scale. First, unlink it. Keyframe it. Go back about 10 frames. And then bring it. Nope, wrong one. Bring it all the way back like that. Beautiful zero. And then I'll do some sort of punchy effect, just like that. So now I have this kind of wipe on effect, which is guy I think I used for the intro. Ah, uh, wait, it's in here. For this thingy, it's underneath, isn't it? 
for this, same effect, basically. Um, but that's not important now I'm saying it. Uh, so I have it wiping on. And all I'm going to do is, again, uh, pre-compose, control shift C And so you don't, you can actually apply your polar coordinates directly to your shape layer, but I find sometimes it's better to do it in a new composition. Um, the only downside about this effect that I find is that uh, oftentimes when you do your polar coordinates effect, it's applying it to the entire uh, uh, image. And the problem with that is that it oftentimes will mess up. And now I have, instead of having a small circular object or a rectangular object in the center of my screen, I have a giant composition. Now I have to worry about the position up. Oftentimes I'm trying to click things below, I'll click on top of my uh, my whatever composition is on top. And that's only really downside to this effect. I mean, if you really want, you can put a mask on top of it, but you know, I'm lazy. So. <laughs> I'm lazy. That's why I drink coffee, because coffee is amazing. So now if we turn everything back on, we have uh, this, wait, no, they're on top of one. Uh, okay. So we just grab the composition, hold shift and slide that bad boy that way, go down, oopsie, see, see, see? shift and now we have this whoa 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 hold up how about red okay uh there's blobbly blob blob okay that was weird when did i paste that on there okay um turn motion blur on for all these layers go in here turn motion blur on for uh, each of these shape layers. Make sure motion blur is on for your composition. And because you know, it's important. I think in one of my videos I forgot to, and someone mentioned that, thank you, motion blur. This is motion graphics, motion blur makes sense, doesn't it? Haha. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, beautiful. And that's how you do that animation. And then you can stack these on top. So let's say, again, like I said, this particular one, I wanted to have a radial wipe on effect, uh, line, line thingy, thingy, thingy guy. Oh, which one is it? Okay. Control should see, pre-compose that. Move all attributes into the new composition. So I don't want to leave this effect here. I want this effect to go into the new composition. So again, I have no effect there. Polar coordinates. Um, and then I can do all sorts of cool things. And if I undo it, you can kind of see that I undid the effect I did. I broke it down to something really stupid. So that's basically it. Um, now, it doesn't end there. You can use this on a whole bunch of other things. Uh, for example, I have this uh, this Google Chrome logo here. So let's create a new composition. Let's get rid of all this. New comp, four seconds, beautiful, beautiful. I'm gonna drag this Chrome logo. It's a PNG, I suggest you use a PNG for this. Um, if you don't have a PNG, there's multiple ways of making PNGs. If you can't make a PNG, well, you know, use what you got, play the color. Um, so I have this Google Chrome logo here. I wonder if, no, I can't do it, it's not a vector, shoot. So I'm gonna go forward about 10 frames and I'm gonna keyframe, actually no, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my polar coordinates effect onto my Google Chrome logo. And then I'm gonna turn my, I'm gonna go from polar, which is this, to a rectangle. So the only way I can really animate this is just by spinning it and scaling it and whatnot. But I always say I want to use my fancy animation. My fancy animation. Uh, I go from polar to rectangle and I turn my interpolation up to 100. So now you can see it's uh, just gigantic thing. Bob. And I'm going to control shift C, pre-compose that, move all attributes into new composition. Okay, and I'm going to open up this new composition, make sure it's... That's about right. And then I'll go back into Comp2 and uh, apply a polar coordinates effect and undo exactly. Wait, no, rectangle the polar. So now here's something we should just talk about. Uh, you see, we only have half a circle, and that's because if you go into Google Chrome, basically what it's doing is taking our entire composition, which is a rectangle, and turning it into a radial effect. But the entire rectangle isn't full inside of this one. See, you have these white edges, so it's going to uh, it's going to cause a lot of problems for us. So what you there are two different things you can do. One, you can uh, 
just scale your image up, but oftentimes that will distort it and make it look even worse. Or, uh, let's see if I can remember, you can use this to make it the correct size. It could be very wrong. That's a preview region or whatever, and then you, wait, wait, I can do it, I can remember. You have to go to, no. There's a way, no. Crop comp to region of interest, there you go. So now the composition is to the size I said it, and you know, it's not perfect, but whatever, but I mean, you can do that in your own time. So now if I go back into composition two, you can see it's again, almost perfect. It's now taking this entire square composition and turning it into a radial effect. Um, I just have to, I think there's move it. Move it, it's like one pixel off, there you go. It's pretty good, I think there's a bit of an edge there, but that's beside the point. So that's basically how you can do that. And then now all I have to do is keyframe the position. Let's go 20 frames here. Position, keyframe, go back, slide that bad boy off. And then, you know, you just do your motion script. You don't have to use motion script, but I love the motion script because the motion script is amazing. Beautiful, I got that ha happening. I play this baby back, I got whew, Google Chrome wipes on and then Google Chrome fades into the bottom. There you go. I, I work for I work for Google. I work for Google because I just animated their logo. Duh, hello. Uh, yeah, so that's how you can take, uh, you know, pre-existing uh, logos and stuff and animate them in motion graphics, make them look really cool and fancy without using your just simple scale on or your, you know, your position. You can do all sorts of different effects with this. I love it, it's amazing. And I'll see you next time. Wait, 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 no, I have to, I have to say this. I was told to say this. Subscribe, you know, like, comment. Now I'll see you next time.